Your fur drawings sometimes look like this. But you want them to look like this. Then this is the video that you need to watch. It can be really difficult to draw fur from imagination or even from a reference. You know what fur looks like, you've seen it before, but you can never get it just right. This video is going to be two for one. I'm going to show you how to draw realistic fur in graphite and in charcoal. We'll start with what not to do. That way you can try and identify some of the mistakes that you might be making in your drawings. Mistake one, scrubbing with your pencil. This one is basically down to technique and control of your pencils and your medium. You don't want to be using a scribbling back and forth motion when drawing realistic fur. It looks rough and creates these very uniform lines that look really unnatural. They look too straight and they don't curve off enough and it just looks very amateurish. Mistake two, not blending. Blending and creating soft transitions between highlights and shadows is what really brings the fur to life. Creating very harsh edges between the darks and the lights just gives a very cartoonish appearance that doesn't help to establish any form or any 3D structure that you need for realistic fur. Mistake number three, no depth. This is one of the biggest mistakes that people make when drawing fur, and it's something that I've covered in some of my other videos. If you do not push your values enough, the fur looks very flat and two-dimensional. The values, so the darks and the lights of the drawing, just don't have enough contrast between them, and the clumps of fur that you're drawing just don't stand out enough. There are two reasons that this might happen. The first is blending too much and not bringing back the lights and the shadows. The second is when only one or two grades of pencil have been used. So for example, just an HB pencil. Now we've got those mistakes out of the way, let's move on to the process of how to draw realistic looking fur. Step one is choosing the right reference. If you are struggling to find good references to work from, Pixabay, Unsplash and wildlife reference photos are great sources. Step two is start light. Whether you're doing this in charcoal or graphite, it's always best to choose a wide variety of pencils ranging from H all the way to 8B. I always start using my lightest pencil because I know it won't leave very dark marks on the surface. You don't want to press too hard in the beginning as you don't want to damage the surface of the paper and you want to be able to remove some of the marks later on. Step three is blocking the basic shapes first. Start the drawing process by roughly blocking in the darkest areas of fur first. This doesn't mean you have to go as dark as possible, you're just mapping them out for later. You should have already studied the reference photo and made a note of where those shadows are. In a painting, this layer would be called a wash, but for me this is just a blocking. I also like to blend this stage back a little bit to remove some of the loose charcoal or graphite from the paper and just soften the transitions between the shadow areas and the lights. It tones the paper so that we can go lighter by erasing the highlights and go darker by using softer pencils or darker charcoal later on. Step four is all about identifying the structures. Next, use a darker pencil or a charcoal stick to draw out the structures of the fur. It's very important that you look for the shadow shapes and the clumps of fur rather than drawing out individual strands. It looks way more realistic this way, plus it saves you a lot of time in the long run by avoiding all of those tiny hairs at this stage. It's really important to follow the contours of the body when you're doing this. It avoids the fur looking flat. If the fur changes direction as it travels over muscles, then make sure that you're showing that change in direction as you're drawing. Step five, add some light. Next is about the lighter areas. We can start to break the clumps up a little bit now. We aren't focusing on the absolute tiny details, but we are being a little bit more precise with the strokes that we're making. In order to create these lighter marks and these smaller details, we're going to remove some of the charcoal or the graphite from the paper using my absolute favorite tool, a putty eraser. Although a regular eraser would work just as well, 
so would a pencil eraser. And in a pinch, a bit of blue tack does the trick too. You want to use your chosen eraser to create the highlighted regions, separating the darks from the lights. Be precise with your marks, don't scrub, and gently lift your drawing from the surface of the paper following the shapes in your reference photo. Make sure to add variation to the shapes, make them different lengths, and add different curves to the strands to make the fur look more interesting. Step six is the transitions. It can start to look a little bit cartoony at this point because we've got those very definite areas of shadow and those very definite areas of light. So we need to add some mid-tones. I like to do this by gently blending using my blending stump, never my finger. I don't want to get any oils on the paper that might affect that drawing or the archival quality of the paper. Gently push some of the darker areas over the white of the paper, following the form of the clumps that you've already put down. You could even use the points of a blending stump or a tissue for this stage to add some more refined hairs. Step seven, pushing the values. At this point, because of all the blending, the drawing might start to look a little bit flat again. The solution for this is to really push the shadows and the highlights and really try and maximize the contrast between the values. I bring back that putty eraser and I use it to refine some of those lighter areas even more, adding finer erased lines, giving some more shape to the clumps of fur. And if you want to get really, really precise, you could even use an eraser pencil. Once you've got those highlights in, you can really make the drawing pop now by adding in the darks. Do not be afraid to use your darkest pencil here. Identify those darkest shadows and then using smooth strokes, again not scrubbing, add the final details of fur. Make sure, just like before, to vary the length and the direction of each strand, but still follow the form, the structure and the anatomy of the animal you're trying to draw. With graphite, I usually stop here, but with charcoal, there's one final step that I sometimes take. I like to use a white pastel pencil to just add a few final loose strands of lighter fur. This really pushes that contrast between the shadows and the highlights as far as it will go. If this was a proper picture, I would probably spray the piece with some fixative before I start to add the white. This is just so that those dark colours don't get picked up by the white pencil and it starts going a muddy grey colour. These techniques can be applied to any animal and any type of fur. If there are two takeaway points that you must remember is one, study your reference carefully throughout the entire drawing process. And two, take your time. Masterpieces and realistic drawings do not happen quickly. The fundamentals of drawing fur and painting fur are nearly identical. If you'd like to learn more about those fundamentals and get a little bit more in depth into what the mistakes are and what the right thing to do is, then check out this video here. You can also check out my Patreon for more in depth full length tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.